In this watercolour demo, I make two errors, not big errors, but they could have been avoided by making sure my outline drawing was correct before going on to paint. So in this video, I want to focus on the importance for some artists, not every artist, not every watercolour painter would do an outline sketch before uh, going on to paint. They, they will just dive straight in there and start painting away. But for me, I, I do an outline sketch first of all, so this is why it's pretty important to, to get it right. Uh, hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, and I produce full-length video tutorials with commentary, which will hopefully help you improve your watercolour techniques and create some great-looking paintings. So, the subject for this demo is the pretty coastal village of Staithes in North Yorkshire in the UK. And this is my source photo here. Actually, let me just take you into the location itself. So, care of Google Maps, this is, um, this is the North Yorkshire coast here and the village of Staithes. Um, as I say, very pretty village. Got a connection with Captain Cook, who lived there for, for some time as a young kid. Um, but this is the, the village. I'm just zooming in here, right on the North Yorkshire coast. And this village that you... It, it's actually a, quite a narrow village, and you're not actually allowed to drive into it. So you've got to park right at the top of the, the village and walk your way down into into the uh, the village and it's split in two there's the river beck there's the the stays beck the river that um runs out into the north sea there and there's this footbridge that joins the two sides of the village together um, let me actually go into street view and maybe just if i go over to this side here and we can uh, yeah, this is the bridge. Actually, let me just go a little bit further up. That's a better angle. So where I took my photograph, I was down on a little slipway um, down here in at the bottom of the picture, looking over the river, almost looking up to the bridge, this footbridge here. Um, this building has been, uh, it's probably been repainted a few times, but very, very pretty rooftops, old old uh, houses here, overlooking the sea, bit of a steep uh, um, side to the, uh, the bank here, um, a pebbly beach, nice reflections. But in this video, I want, to, I want to, as I said, I want to cover how important it is to get the initial drawing right. So let me just go back to my source photo. So this is my photo. Um, it's, it's quite, it's quite an easy scene to do from a, from a drawing point of view, but I, I rush things and uh, you'll see in a minute um, what I, the, the sort of minor um, errors I made and, and how, I, how I went about um, trying to correct them, um, whether it was right or wrong. Uh, but lovely scene of the footbridge, sunny day, this was taken in June, um, sunny day. Lots of, from a watercolour point of view, this is quite, um, quite a nice, subject because it's got a different range got a good range of values look how dark it is under the under the bridge there quite light um running across the top light so the light's coming from the right hand side so the front of this sort of bluish building here um is is brightly lit and we've got brightly lit buildings behind as well um the sunlight hitting this this supporting wall, um, and maybe some some light hitting little tiny pebbles and tops of posts and so on. So a really good scene. There's a figure there as well. So we've got some kind of context, some kind of uh, um, uh, element to to relate different sizes to. So a nice little figure, which I'll include. And I'll pop in a boat as well because there are these um, these fishing boats uh, traditional to the area that that sort of uh, are moored up. I don't think they're operational now. They're more for 
more for the tourists to, uh, to have a pretty scene. So there's, there's these lovely boats on the on the riverbank. So that's a scene. Um, let's see how we get on. So the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford cold press as per normal. Um, 300 grams in weight. So cold press is medium texture, medium roughness. Uh, it's got a little bit of surface surface about it. And using a 3B pencil here doing the outline sketch. So this is where I'm making the first error. I'm drawing the solid part of the footbridge. Um, and well, I've done I've done the top of the railings. I should say I've done the top of the railing there and the second line down. Um, I'm rushing things and uh, at this stage, I think that's the solid part of the bridge, but it's not. Um, you'll see in a minute when I do the figure. Um, I place the figure incorrectly to um, to this uh, to those two lines there, the two horizontal lines. Um, and we'll see how I correct it later on in the in the painting stage. Now, on the other side of the bridge, there's this lovely bluish house, which I can equate in my palette to a, a cobalt turquoise or a cobalt green. It's that sort of bluey green color, more blue than green, probably. And uh, I want to make that a, a feature of the painting. It's sort of a focal point, really, over there on the far side, but very um, loosely rendered, drawn in. Um, just the outline shape of it, and then just opposite it, it we've got a, a row of houses going um, up the village on that far side. Then just below that, there's some steps coming down to the, the river bank. I've sneaked in, I've inserted a boat there, um, just a very simple shape of a boat, almost like a rectangle with a few sort of curvy corners to uh, for the hull. And then down to the shoreline, up, up the shoreline, and the far houses, some distant houses um, that are sort of perched high on the, uh, the side of the river, looking down, uh, probably quite exposed there, I would guess. Um, nice, nice little sort of backdrop, and it's, it's quite a nice composition to choose this scene. It's... Uh, We've got the bridge sort of leading the eye into the scene. So this is me now doing the figure and those two lines were in, intending to be the solid part of the bridge. I was going to do the railings above that, but that first line is the, if you under, if you follow my drift, that first line now is the railing. And then the second line down is the top, the physical top of the ridge. So I'm going to have to compensate for that when I start doing the painting. I really should have done three lines. Um, top, top of the railings, top of the bridge, and bottom of the bridge. But I've just done two. Well, not a major issue. Uh, but it's just something extra I need to contend with when I, when I do the painting. The other thing I've missed out, going back to the reference photo, um, and if you want to keep seeing my reference photo as I paint the demo, then quite simply just open up another tab in your browser, um, go to the same video, and in that tab, pause it in the opening minutes, just where I show the full picture, and then you can keep uh, flicking between the two. But you'll see in the, in the source photo, which would be quite nice from a composition point of view, down in the bottom left left hand corner we've got the near side of the river the the part of the the river bank that i'm standing on to take that photo and there's a nice little post there with some rope wrapped around it and something going on there it would be a nice something nice to have down there in the bottom left hand corner just to connect the scene just to cement it together just to give some context to we are on the opposite side of the river rather than me being floating in midair, hovering above the surface of the river. 
Um, it just just gives the viewer some some idea of where I am. So those were the the two the two main issues I made in this drawing. I rushed it, um, and with the the benefit of hindsight, I probably would have gone back and corrected these. Might have, I might have got my rubber out and changed the figure perhaps, or certainly put in the third line, the bottom, the correct the correct bottom of the bridge. Uh, thinking about thinking about perspective as well, the actual line of that bridge, and then secondly include something down there in the bottom left hand corner, which would be a nice balance to the the, the three main areas I've got in the painting at the moment are the figure, that bluish house, the boat on the right hand side. It just needs something to balance it out. I think on the left hand side. I'll just go through my palette on the uh, the right hand side there. So right at the top, I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt, turquoise, cobalt green, um, cerulean blue in the middle, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson, then a bright red, a light red, and the bottom two, cadmium orange and lemon yellow. And I'll describe the, the brushes as I'm going through as well. Uh, if you see my any of my previous videos, I sort of go through painting a, a painting in four steps. So first step is the outline sketch, um, which I, I normally try and get right before uh, before going to the painting, but made a little bit of an error here. Uh, and then second step is getting in the wash, which is what I'm doing now, just really covering the whole paper with paint, um, apart from those bits that I want to keep deliberately light or I, I want to paint in some kind of a different colour. So typically in a street scene, it would be, I'd be painting around figures or cars or maybe a window. Um, or anything that's going to be left white in the end painting. So I'm using a mop brush here. This is a Raphael mop brush, which is a synthetic, synthetic brush. Getting in the main colours, some of which I won't actually paint over again. So a lot of the the buildings, well, the sky. Let's go. Let's deal with the sky first of all. The sky, I won't paint. I won't paint over again. It's not actually a big part of the overall scene as regards the areas, so it's it's done quite quickly. And you can see, I wasn't sort of laying down my wash as horizontal lines. I was really daubing some paint on in random brush marks with random brush strokes. Uh, which helps give you, with a big brush, helps give you some kind of impression of some soft clouds, some high high altitude clouds there, uh, just to just to introduce a little bit of different texture to it, rather than being too too um, too sort of flat. And over on the right hand side, I've gone in with a sort of base color of a. a a red there it will dry now with watercolor it, everything's going to dry a lot lighter so i need to sometimes compensate and go a little bit darker than i think and that's why it might some of this might appear quite dark initially but it is going to dry one or two values lighter now here is the river and at this stage in the painting, I've totally forgotten about the, the left-hand side of the bank. You can see there I'm painting away underneath the bridge. I've got no idea where the bottom of the bridge is going to be. Well, I've just got those two lines, um, the, ra the railings, that figure, uh, the, the, um, the figure sort of cut in half by the railings, uh, and then the, the base of the bridge. Um, no idea at this stage where the bottom of that bridge is going to be. 
Now, continuing over, bearing in mind, we're, we're now, we, we're, we've got here the reflections of the building, so no more blue sky anymore, a bit of a, um, a darker theme going on. And then just really now mopping up some excess moisture, some of the, because there's a slight slope on this board, um, not too much, about 10 degrees or 15 degrees or so. Um, it's quite, um, it's not very steep at all. I have to keep it fairly flat because of the, because of doing the, the, the videoing. So, um, yeah, there, there's a slight accumulation. I need to sort of mop that up generally. And now I'm speeding up the process with a hairdryer. Thankfully, turned off the sound because I need to make sure everything is quite dry before going on to the next step. I sometimes with a, with a hairdryer, just concentrate. If you've got a, a good hairdryer that, where you can aim it at a particular part of the painting, sometimes it's nice to get a, a good range of edges. So I could be drying one part of the painting where I do want some hard edges, some very sharp edges, uh, but then maybe leave the paper still quite moist or damp where I want to get some soft edges. So timing is very important in watercolour. Um, you know, the, the, the actual timing of the, the different stages. So uh, if you do want those soft edges, then you've got to work quite quickly. Um, if you're just laying down lots of transparent washes and letting the paper dry between the two, then you can be a little bit more relaxed um, with the process. So that was step number two, getting in the initial wash, as I say, covering up most of what I'm doing there. And then with a smaller brush now, this is still a mop brush. This is a Jackson's squirrel mop, squirrel mop brush. Um, I think it's a size 10 or 10, a diameter of 10, 10, 10 millimeters or so. And generally working from the back, the, the background coming forward. So I put in the, the distant coastline there, first of all, on the left hand side with a sort of a light bluish gray. And now we're coming to the left hand buildings, the uh, buildings that are, that are immediately overlooking the beck, this, this name of the river, and just quite loosely putting in some rooftops Just a few here and there. Don't need to be too, too precise with some of these buildings because they're not, I'm painting in a loose style, so I don't need to be too exact with the, with the details. Um, I will be going in darker on top of this, but it's just like the next the next uh, sequence. So around that figure, so I've gone down to the top of the bridge. This is the, there's a, there's a sort of extension to the, the blue house that's the same color and I've just painted in there this side of the this side of the the wall that's facing us and keeping the right hand side bright unpainted because that's where the sunlight's hitting it with this mop brush it's very important to get a sharp edge you can see well you can just about see with the brush, I've got, got, I've not got too much water on the brush, and I'm able to get a good edge to it, and then holding it, holding the brush like a pen or pencil, I can be a bit more precise and 
making sure I keep turning the brush just to get to, to use the point to get that sharp edge to get in some nice hard lines. Now there's a bit of shadow between the blue house and these these houses, so just a little bit of a bit of a darker value. It was ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna. Pick up a little bit of neutral tint of want to go really dark. This is that there. I think there's a bit of a footpath going up in front of the houses, just above the river. So that's that line there. Now I'm coming down to the right of the steps. Just to find the edge of those steps. A little bit darker as I come down to the base of that uh, retaining wall to, to where the um, where the shoreline starts. And a bit of darkness beyond the boat, so the boat's going to be quite light in value. That'll, that's, that'll be a nice bit of contrast there, the, the darkness of the, um, the wall and then the light boat and then the a slightly darker um, shore shoreline. So this, the other side of the bridge, the, the bit that's supporting the bridge at the other side, um, is, is like a sort of stone wall, a brick wall, and I've got to try and um, give the impression of that with very quickly using that mop brush, dragging it across, so I can introduce a few little, a few little uh, lighter areas that could be some brighter stones in that wall catching a bit of light. Those steps being quite quite old, I've very quickly painted in a few lines there to give the impression of those steps, uneven steps, maybe a little bit worn in the middle, a um, little bit of a curve in there, so not too perfect. The beach here, the, sh the shoreline, which is I think it's sort of at low tide here, my, my scene. I think it was low tide. So again, I've dragged and on this rough um, surface, I get, I, I actually have little parts of the paper showing through, which we can eventually make into something. We could make them into little pebbles with a bit of shadow on the left hand side, the, the, the sunlight's coming from the right. So um, a little bit of bit of shadow on the uh, on the left hand side so this is me now thinking you can hear my brain working now thinking I've done the bridge wrong I don't I I don't have now the bottom of that bridge so I'm going to have to now freehand put it in so I've thought about it for a minute or two and thinking, well, shall I get the pencil out and draw in the bottom of the bridge or shall I just, um, as best I can, uh, paint in the bridge there? Thinking about perspective, so it's wider on the left-hand side, tapers down to a, a narrow bit towards the right-hand side. A little bit darker than the background buildings and then hopefully I can get away with it and continue on with everything that's below that bridge. Now that bridge, the, this I think it's a metal bridge, um, like a, a girder bridge and it's got some imperfections in it and little dark bits and some staining and maybe a bit a bit rusty or the paintwork coming off. So um, a bit like the sky, I'm sort of moving the brush around, trying to lift off little areas to make them lighter, um, going in with some thicker paint there, thicker paint, less water, thicker paint, and then 
we're, we're doing a little bit of wet in wet there, we'll get some soft, softer marks appearing within that bridge. Need to get the hairdryer out just to make sure, sure things are perfectly dry before going in with some darks. And they're going to be painting below that bridge, so just make sure everything is quite dry so don't get too much unnecessary um, blending going on. Now, this is the shoreline beyond the bridge over on the left hand side going up to the start of the buildings and what I'm doing now is just really introducing a few little gaps that I can make into some of these larger stones that might be catching some light and I can put a little bit of dark shadow behind them so in, a, in quite a quick and random way, just um, crisscrossing the surface, making, uh, making some um, stones there. Just checking the, had a good edge on my brush. It's, it's low tide, so there's a bit of, um, we can see some far banks appearing in the distance. This is the darker reflection of the buildings. I need to go darker than darker in value than the objects that are being reflected. So painting in different directions just to give some differences in values in a sort of random way, try, trying to get the impression of the sort of uh, reflective nature of the surface of the water. So I picked up a bit of burnt sienna there, burnt umber, and a tiny bit of neutral tint just to darken things up a little bit. I'm thinking now about this lighter gap. So we've got a light gap between the blue building and the building on the right hand side. Quite a bright gap in there. And that's the the area I've just left there, that um, that brighter area. Use the fingers just to do a bit of mixing between the shoreline and the reflections. I think at this stage, uh, I look at the painting, I think, well, um, is this, is this going to turn out okay? Um, but you just got to, with watercolour, things often look pretty bad before they look, start to look pretty good, hopefully. Um, so, it does look um, pretty bad. Now, this is, this is error number two. Two, I forgot to do the the post in the bottom left hand corner of the scene, the nearby shore that I'm standing on when I took my photograph, and it it's starting to look a little bit better now as a composition. It's pulling it together. It's connecting the different elements together. But the post isn't ideal. It's sort of it's in line. It is too much in line with the reflections of the buildings behind. And I used 
Uh, I don't know whether you saw that, but there was a little sort of indentation in the reflection, and I used that as the the top of the post, imagining the light hitting the top of that post. So um, I'll see later on if I if I managed to get away with it. Uh, probably in hindsight, it could have been perhaps over to the left or a bit more to the right, going into going into that um, reflection would have been a bit better. Now for some darker values. And generally here, I've got less water on the brush than previous stages. So thicker paint, uh, darker values. Uh, again, trying to think that the, the painting is going to dry lighter than I think. So got to go a little bit darker than, I, than, than you might think. Uh, there's this shadow going across the, the buildings on the right hand side. It's sometimes good just to have a, a slightly dry brush so you, you end up with a few bits of the paper just showing through. Now I'm painting over on the left hand side. A few shadows underneath the roof just defines that where that roof is, just helps the viewer decide that is a roof with a bit of shadow underneath it. Some shadows being caused by the objects to the right. If the line is too hard, just quickly you can lift it out or maybe drop a little bit of clear water on it or use the finger fingertips quickly just to smudge it, basically. What I'm doing now is quite important. This, so I, I put in that bridge and now this is the shadow underneath the bridge, which again, I didn't draw. So it's going in freehand, uh, like the bridge, thinking about perspective. So I, I applied with that mop brush, I apply, applied more pressure on the brush to get a thicker, a thicker line on the left. And then as I'm going over to the right, almost in one process, uh, Re relieving the pressure and so I get a, a narrower line. Below that I've got a bit of a, a, a darker value so it's in contrast to the uh, the colour of the bridge so that's the the base of the buildings above the sort of um, retaining wall or the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the far side of the river there is a bit of lighter area just beyond the bridge, just about where I am now. And then below the bridge on the far side is probably one of the darker areas of the whole painting. And that's where I need to as you saw me there, neutral tint, allergen crimson, bit of burnt umber, go in really dark, but not, not too, um, I'm trying to be too dark that it's looking too black or too like a sort of dark gray color. I tried to make it a little bit more interesting by introducing uh, a touch of blue or a touch of allergen crimson is always a good one. And then rendering the the right hand side of this dark area that's that's the uh, a few little bits of stonework there come on down base of the wall right down to the river's edge now And then a bit of a shadow coming across the surface of the water. 
So I'm doing this, could have done it as a, a thin wash. I'm just using some dry brush marks there, but I could have had a really weak wash uh, and then gone over in that way. Now this is the reflection of the of that darker area underneath the bridge. And continue over a little bit. Some extra definition to the shoreline. Perhaps some windows being reflected, just a few little little blobs in the water. Now I've picked up a small round brush here with a good point just to get in some shadow on the post. Some ropes tied around the middle of it. And because this is the foreground, I don't need to do too much detail just to, to give the impression that there's something, you know, this is the left-hand side. Um, it's a fairly narrow, it's a fairly narrow river. Drawing in now the edge of the far buildings, just the, the edge of the rooftops, a few little chimneys and windows and so on. This is the base of the wall. I'm just going to cover up some of those gaps. There were just too many little lighter areas showing on that side. And as I said before, just with these lighter areas, they're going to be stones or boulders there. And just to make them a bit more realistic and add some uh, depth and substance to them, just a little shadow on the left-hand side. In a similar way, this wall, and just indicating the, the sort of mortar lines of some of these boulders. Not, not, I'm not drawing every single boulder, just a, just a few of them. The dark edge under the roof of the uh, extension to the blue building. At this stage, there's not a lot of wash on that brush. It's just it's almost pure pigment, pure paint. Far. The right hand buildings, just a few windows. While I've got this brush,
with these old buildings. You just need to make lots of marks like this to give the impression of the age of the building. That's the top of the boat, just so we can see into, you can just about see a little bit of the hull of that boat. That's the reflection of the underneath of the bridge. A bit like the shadow, just a few fairly dry brush marks, not too much moisture on the brush. And the boat, fairly light wash. It's going to dry a little bit lighter than this and this is the same way that I do a lot of boats at low tide or indeed um, cars in a street scene light wash and then go in with some darker thicker shadow below and the two blend in with each other so you get this blending going on you might just about see it it's the darker paint is going going up against gravity, going into the uh, the hull of the boat, giving us a nice gra um, graded sort of um, a, a sort of uh, a softer a transition from the from the lighter boat to the darker shadows. Now, the all important railings, which I didn't draw in. Um, I think if I drew in, if I drew in those railings, the pencil march might show too much. I just want it to be fairly loose. I've got to think that these railings, there's there's the near railings and then there's the far railings. So the far railings just a little bit shorter, of course, with perspective, and not almost not doing every single railing. And then with the horizontal rails, not not actually going in with every single rail just a few of them there's a few there's a few little minute breaks in the line some marks on the bridge perhaps a darker line underneath the bridge just a little bit Railings on the far side. Pick up on a few boulders and stones. Another post there. You can, in a scene like this, you can make up where the posts appear. That's an obvious thing that you can move around to um, help with the composition. But those posts are, are very handy because you, you can put in that vertical line and then you're thinking about the reflection of it as well. It just, uh, just, just helps with the composition. So you can, you can introduce those posts wherever you want to. Incidentally, if, if you do want to help me out uh, with with my production of these videos, um, they are free to watch, of course, um, but they're not free to make. And there's, there's two things you could do, please, to um, to help me out. Um, the first thing you could do is subscribe to my channel uh, because that's going to send a message to the powers at Google that you uh, maybe appreciate in some way my videos and you'll get notifications of uh, future video releases and 
Um, secondly, you can support me on Patreon. On Patreon, I post exclusive content and postings that aren't available through YouTube and sharing files. I also post some monthly painting projects. You never know, this might be one of those projects, but we all, everyone on the scheme then has a go at this painting and you submit your painting to me, a photograph of the uh, painting, and then I give you a critique back, which might be a, a written or a, a video, a video critique. There's the figure going in there. Um, yes, yeah, so more, more details on Patreon and the things that all the activities that are going up there. Um, we've got a, you can post your paintings and uh, share, share your paintings with lots of other watercolour enthusiasts around the world. Uh, we also do a regular Q&A session as well. Um, so check that out, Patreon, um, patreon.com slash Tim will not, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T. We'll get you there. Now, I picked up a bit of red, this bright red, with my detail brush. And get in the, a line, a nice line. Putting it, putting a line like that on boats, it just makes them a bit more convincing as a boat. Um, Often, often works rather than just having a sort of plain, a plain hull. Get in some, some marks, uh, signage, writing, lines uh, just below the top of the hull, um, just underneath the gunnels. Is a, is a good idea to make them a little bit more, a little bit more con uh, uh, convincing. Now I'm using that brush, same brush with a good point and picking up some white paint just to pick up on some light hitting, uh, prim it's primarily going to be the railings. Uh, just to emphasize the top of that post on the nearby bank and then, yeah, just a few railings. Most important bit was just a little bit of, um, bit of railings in front of the figure on the bridge, just to just to show that figure's not fall, not falling in the water. Um, just a few there. Some dots, just to. Some pebbles, stones catching the light. Top of that, I think it's a, a, a life buoy on the far side, um, which makes sense. Perhaps some railings for the steps. Bit of light hitting the right hand side of some of the posts. Some light hitting the figure as well. Bit of bit of paint on the top of the head and the shoulders. So this is my M painting. Might look a little bit different to as you saw it in the video, because I've used a different camera. Um, for this, but it's probably a little bit truer to, to the colours. Um, a scene, so go back to my source photo, there we are there. Um, the River Beck in States, North Yorkshire, and my take on the importance of getting the initial drawing right. I made some minor errors, the rushing the drawing of the bridge, I forgot about this lovely post here. Do you see this post and um, these, these curved bits of 
a rope here and some interesting shadows. Yeah, I missed, missed the opportunity of including those in my initial drawing, but I sort of tried to sneak it in. I, I, I um, compensated for, I only drew in the top of the railings and the top of the bridge. I forgot to do the bottom of the bridge. But as you can see, it, it sort of turned out okay in the end. And then forgetting to to do that post on the left hand side. So I used, there was this little sort of mark um, in the outline of the reflections. And I just sort of used that uh, to sneak in that post and just with a dry brush mark created that um, that post there. But that's what you can do in, with, when you're painting in a loose style. You can use little things to um, to make something of them. So bit, bits of highlights here could be the top of a figure or some object on the far side. Um, just observing what you've painted and just trying to maybe make something of them. A bit of light catching a post, light catching a street light or something like that. Or introducing other figures where you see you just get the impression of a, a head or some shoulders so that's it stays north yorkshire thanks for watching catch up with you next time